Say hi, Ruben. Say hi, saying hi to my own camera, so what's going on, folks? This is the Femi Takeover. Hey guys, um, my name is Femi. I'm one of the other um, fifth years who are studying with Dal with Ruben in Darwin. God, I can't speak today. Um, so I know it's pretty unusual to see me do a vlog, but I'm taking over for this week because I am in Sydney at the moment because I have been invited to be part of um, SBS Insights program on mental health. So cheers to SBS for finding me out and for providing me with the incredible accommodation. Um, as you might see, it's not too flash, but that's a job. Um, but thank you so much for the opportunity. So as you know, we all go through mental health problems as students. It's often something that we don't talk about at university or even in the clinical setting. So I'm just going to take you guys through my days in Sydney and have a chat and show you guys what I've been up to and hopefully it will help you guys with some of the problems you're doing, I'm um, sorry, that you're going through at the moment and we'll see what happens. So right now, Terry and I, which my sister was filming, um, we're just going to look for possible dinner places and we'll keep you updated soon. Hey guys, so we are going now. for the filming of the SBS show. We're waiting for a cab. Let you guys know what else happens. Is anything exciting? Is that the cab? Oh, no, it's not the cab. We just wait outside, eh? Oh. Oh, okay, see. So hopefully a cab was called. <sighs> so. Kind of nervous. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. Not it, but hopefully it will give us um, a. You look very unflattering. <laughs> Dude, you can't see that. Sorry. I'm kind of nervous. Hopefully, I won't say anything silly, but I think it's gonna be a great cause for us to like talk about mental health um, within our profession. Given that you know, just a week ago we had a gastroenterologist in Brisbane kill himself, so it's I don't think it's acceptable, and I'm pretty sure most of us would disagree that it's so bad that people who who work to save lives are choosing to take their own lives because of how stressful and depressed they feel in their careers. So um, tonight it's going to be SBS Insight. I'll let you guys know when they're going to air the show. And I would really recommend everyone watch it and get engaged in the discussion behind it um, and start a conversation. So hopefully I won't mess up and say anything silly, um, but kind of excited. <laughs> So you you went through a real burnout, didn't you, in yeah. your third year? Tell us what happened. I just didn't feel emotion for about six months. No joy, no like sadness, no stress. I was just emotionally kind of blunted. And it got to my third year where I would come home and just cry for hours 
and nothing would like trigger it off. It would just happen. And I just got to a stage where I would look in the mirror and I would not recognize the 18 year old who started medicine and the person I was in third year. I was so different. Mm. And what did you do? It took a lot of courage. Um, but I picked the phone and I, I think I called um, Headspace. It, I just did it on my own because I knew that the way I was going, I, I would not want me as a, my doctor. I knew that it wasn't going the right direction. So mm. You didn't go to the hospital? You didn't go to any of your colleagues? You didn't talk no. to anybody around you? I, I think, I guess it's a cultural thing within medicine that you can't let your guard down. And if you come out and say, oh, I don't think I'm coping well, you're worried that people will judge you for being incompetent, like that you can't deal with what's in front of you. So. Others feel, feel like that? I mean, what's your reaction to... to So, Femi, what was your experience being on the SBS Insight program? Um, I think it was a really humbling experience for me to kind of be the only student on the panel, talk mm. about what we experience at med school. And I know it's my story, but I hope it struck a chord with a lot of other people because I've had a lot, a lot of students reach out to me when I first made the announcement. I was on the show that their experience is similar. Mm -hmm. um, a kind of distress whilst being um, in the preclinical years slash clinical years. Um, so it was very humbling um, and uh, it was just incredible because SBS was extremely supportive um, throughout the entire process. The producers would call me like once a week or um, to check how it was going since filming the show and before the show. Um, a lot of reassurance and it was great meeting the doctors on the panel as well because I guess like for a med student, because you haven't even started your career yet, you're really worried about how what you're going to say is being perceived and you've got to be kind of careful so that your comments are always politically correct. Um, so I think it was great having this doctors there to give me a bit of pointers and even after the show, um, having all of the panel reach out and you know we like kind of debrief on WhatsApp over it, it was just, it was great and meeting all these big people. So it was, it was humbling, but it was a great opportunity and I'm so glad I, I did it. Mm, okay, that's good. So how has the response been since the program was aired? Um, it's been surprisingly really good. I, I wasn't expecting it to be so positive. I was generally worried about it the Monday night before. I was really nervous about it coming out. and I had like a call of close, close friends and like advice on how to deal with it. But after it aired, it was just incredible. Like the phone was going off, my email was going off. And, it's just, I just saw everyone just start opening up about their own stories. And these are people that I've never spoken to in my life, mm -hmm. sharing their deepest thoughts. And they probably haven't said it out to anyone, like a lot of their close friends. So it was, um, it was incredible. And just to see that kind of spread from just from within the college to like, you know, um, bigger bodies like AMSA and AMA. And then to have like, and then you see the response that like you're at Darwin with, having a whole grand rounds on it. It's just, it's just to see the scale of how open conversations result in all these things happening. And and I, I, I think there has been a genuine change in the attitude now. Like I feel like within younger doctors, like maybe not with like your old consultants to some extent, but with younger doctors, there's, there really is that push to looking out for, for one another to like taking that break. and. It's kind of, it's like, it's kind of like we're actually changing the culture in a small way. But it, it's, I think it was, it was so different like a year ago without this conversation happening. So I think, I think that it's been incredibly positive and I'm so glad that we're actually talking about it because it's, it needs to change. Mm -hmm. And do you think that this change is occurring because the discussion is relatable to many junior doctors? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think, um, we all experience it in some ways. I'm sure that everyone who's on the who's watching Ruben's blog as a med student has had their moment where they felt overwhelmed by everything. They felt that they were so behind the crowd and have probably walked into GLS as putting on a face that you've got this under control. And you know, by the time you hit spot back, you literally lose 
everything you you know you're so stressed out exercise goes out the window it's it's normal we all experience it the problem is that we don't talk about it and because we put this facade that we're all coping well it has created this culture that we always have to be competent mm-hmm. whereas that's not the case whereas now I think when I think when someone comes out publicly and says that it's okay for you to not be okay um, it just makes everyone feel like okay I can talk about it I can you know try change something about my life and my friend's life and my colleague's life and I think that was probably the biggest takeaway I could tell get from the show was that these were regis who were just at the start of their career you know GP trainees and you know and then they were sitting in a room where they had the chair of the medical board and you know and big big people like the prep like you know the the director of a, of a clinical specialty and for them to openly say that it just creates this safe environment to say that talking about mental health it's not putting like the nail through your career and so I think because we kind of got over that fear through the show it's just becoming a lot easier for everyone to relate and it's I think whenever anything's personal and it's someone sharing their own story you relate to it because at the end of the day we're all humans and that's how we connect um, so I, it's it's been incredible to see how everyone's related to it and I know everyone has gone through a phase in their life where they have felt worn out and burnt out and if not you probably will go through it in the future mm-hmm. So it's good to feel like there's other people out there who's gone through it and who are going through it. Yes, definitely. Um, and what's next for you, Femi? Um, a lot. At the moment, it's passing barriers. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but other than that, um, and I, I don't want this whole thing to be just be like, oh, we talked about it and then you know there's all these like little talks about it and then it all kind of finished I kind of wanted to be sort of like um that something happened after us talking about it so um, it's great to see Western Australia actually change their mental reporting policy so that treating doctors might like in, if the proposal goes through your treating doctors won't be able to report you and and I also want I guess it's more JC specific I guess it's to make sure that we have a system at JCU where we are to some extent more equipped to deal with what's in front of us. And and I know the university can't provide it like 110% because at the end of the day, it's your learned behavior. But to have some kind of systems and resources out there that students can so easily access um, so that we are able to become healthier. And doing medicine doesn't mean that you've got to put your life in like the back seat it really does and it's 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 a part of your life and you can't let it become your life um, and I think it's very important in, in medical education that we need to talk about self-care about resilience about burnout because it happens it, it's going to happen if you do if you're not going through it now you might experience it but the thing is it's it's preventable it's not like the in, inevitable outcome of medicine it's it's something that happens because there's been cycles and cycles of things that you might have neglected or things that I have neglected. Um, so for me, I, that's what I'm looking into is like changing, like maybe the core structure of having services and having workshops and 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 creating this environment where in where as students we can easily come up and say, look, I'm I don't think I'm going well. Like I'm a bit stressed, and the response that you get and the services that you get will actually help you in the best way to cope with it so that you develop all these coping strategies so that transition from med student to doctor becomes so easy that you are able to like, you know, fulfill your job as what you're trying to do. That's what's next, but yes. Do it. But what was it like being, you know, like watching it actually air? Because like, for me it was it like was funny. Very, it was very surreal, like it's very odd to see somebody i think it's a conversation that never really happens and lives among your close friends yeah so to actually watch it on tv is very strange and i think it was i think it's actually nearly reassuring to see other people have been through the same thing yeah you're not the only one who's experienced it 